Corey, the shares are down, but yeah. it's still trading above the IPO price. Should we be too concerned? Barely. Mm -hmm. Barely. Well, obviously, I mean, a lot of comparisons were sort of instantly made to Twitter, which also sort of did a face plant after its first <laughs> quarter. But I think it's useful to really look at the numbers and really get a better understanding of the dynamics affecting Snapchat's business and seeing how it's different than Twitter and everything else. And, and, and you know, what you see when you look at the daily active users numbers is that they just aren't growing that much and that while well, this company had fantastic growth uh, in the last couple of quarters and years, that growth has really slowed down. And the the numbers that we saw leading up to the IPO didn't get a lot better, despite all the publicity, uh, you know, that may have gone have gone ahead with this. It may have uh, helped bring people to the platform. You would have hoped as much. Uh, on a percentage basis, right? You saw a, a dramatic slowdown from double-digit growth uh, up until two quarters ago, three quarters ago now. But right in the IPO, the two quarters right before the IPO went to single-digit growth, down to three percent into the IPO, then to a little better than five percent of the numbers reported yesterday. But that's not very good. Uh, it was better than some analysts. It was worse than some analysts. Who cares if the analysts are right? Who cares if the analysts are wrong? What this shows us is their ability to draw new users to the platform uh, is, is uh, getting very difficult for Snapchat. Well, in Snapchat's defense, I suppose, let's play devil's advocate and say, well, of course, the first few quarters, user growth is going to be massive. That's what happens every time there's something new. And it's not like it's declining. The growth is still there. It's just that it's not yeah. there in double digits. Uh, if this were a utility and there was a lack of declines and they're just trying to eke out a 3% dividend, that'd be great. This is priced like a growth stock. It has no profits whatsoever, and there's an expectation that they're going to grow and grow and grow fast. And what we saw was a lack of engagement here, uh, both from advertisers and from users. I think, uh, you know, the other worrisome thing, as you suggested in the intro, is that, is that you know, this is not happening in a vacuum. This is happening when F Facebook is going all in with Instagram stories and Facebook stories, and those have been uh, quite popular. Those are much bigger platforms than Snapchat is. And, and the slowdown in the growth exactly coincides with the launch of Instagram stories. And I don't think we can pretend like that's got nothing to do with each other. Clearly, they're going after the same users with a very similar product. What could be an end game here? Because it doesn't sound very positive for Snapchat. Also, their hosting costs are going up, I noticed, quarter over quarter. And their CapEx is going up. They're spending $20 million or something in, in Q1. Yeah on capital expenditures. So if they don't come up with something that's going to force that user growth up, what happens? Well, look, there, there are some really worrisome things about the business model. One of the things that sort of started to look good going into the IPO was that the negative gross margin story, and on an annual basis, they lost money in gross margin. Just th think about that for a second, right? They're getting less money in the door than just to make the product. Forget the cost of R&D or, or their general administrative costs or their marketing costs. Just the cost of goods is greater than the value of the product in itself. So negative gross margins is, is an insane concept. But it looked like it was getting better going into the quarter. Well, or going into the IPO, I should say. In fact, they had two quarters where they had positive gross margins. So their first quarter uh, out the door as a public company, uh, they go negative gross margins again. It's not just a money-losing business. It's a negative gross margin business. And that's just horrendous in terms of a business model. Now, they've raised tons of money in the IPO. They sold that stock with such hope that things were getting better when they made The numbers looked mm. so much better going into it that they've extended a very long runway. But it's problematic for this business that they can't even make money on a gross margin basis. Corey, you won't have had time to see this because it's just crossing in the last few minutes, but I do want to ask you if you have yeah. any reaction to the news that Microsoft now says that iTunes is coming to the Windows App Store. So it looks like Apple is getting more and more open as the quarters and years go by. Yeah, that's inter it's, it's really interesting. I think that um, you know, I, 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 showing my age and the fact that these hairs aren't exactly blonde anymore. The, you know, I remember the thing that really put Apple uh, back on the map was when the iPod itself went to a Windows platform that was so much bigger. And, and this really matters because still, uh, the, the most computers are, are running Windows uh, OS. So the notion that, uh, and Apple Music has been struggling uh, in its battle with, um, with Spotify, let alone all the other players out there like uh, Real Network's uh, uh, Napster product and others. So uh, this is a big move for Apple. It's important for them to be on these platforms on the desktop, but you know, fundamentally the game is all mobile, and they're already uh, obviously on all the Apple devices. So uh, the real game changer would be as if they were to be uh, more available and more prevalent uh, in an Android platform, and there, of course, is, is a bigger struggle. But the game's all about mobile now. Desktop not as important as it was back in the day.